Uh, hold on. So you're working from 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. and you're making peanuts? Yeah. No way. Yeah. My mom's hot. So <laughs> your, your mom's hot? My mom what is do hot. you mean? Like, she's just hot, so then she gets a lot of, like, free stuff. So then I've gotten this car for free. Oh, okay. So you're leveraging the, you know, the hotness of your mom, <laughs> okay, uh, to get cars. Yeah. <laughs> you need money to make money. Mm -hmm. And if you're coming and starting your profession, you're going to have to market yourself as a tattoo artist. But if you have nothing to come up with, you're going to be stuck. Welcome to Finance Action, the show where we take action. My name is Roman, and today I'm with Linda. Linda, how are you doing? Good. How are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. Linda, let's look at your profile. You are 24 years old. You're originally from Seattle, and you currently live in Seattle. You work as a tattoo apprentice, which is very interesting, as well as a server. Is that right? That's correct. Awesome. Looking at the way you've rated your personal finances, Linda from Chilling to Mayday, you rated yourself as surviving, which is nice to see. Okay, maybe not the most optimal, but it's nice to see. Tell me more. What's going on? I feel like my mom and my dad are like polar opposites. They're kind of like my my dad's like a monk and he does very <laughs> frugal with his money. Okay. And then my mom's an overspender, which I feel like where I got my spending habits from. Wow, okay. So you've got the, the overspend side of the story. But at some point, um, Linda, you were in a pretty good financial spot, right? Tell me more about that. At like, a, like a few years ago, I had like 10 grand saved in my bank account. Wow. But then I was unemployed for a while because I was so lost. So I quit my job. And then I stayed at home trying to like figure out myself and where I want to see myself in a few years. I just, I guess for a while, I couldn't figure it out. And then I went back to serving. And then it was like a weird thing that happened where I was drawing with my my boyfriend's little sister. And I was like drawing this really cute, I think it was like a fairy or something. And then someone was in the room with me and she was like, oh my God, you should be a tattoo artist. And I was like, you're right. And I was like, oh my God, this is like what type of career that I've, I feel like I would enjoy being in every day and I didn't even think about it in the slightest and then th from that day on I started trying to become a tattoo artist. Okay and so that has led you today to uh, be a tattoo apprentice mm -hmm. okay and we'll be discussing more about that as uh, the pay around this is not the most optimal <laughs> right uh, but today you're coming in here with finances that are a little bit borderline and you have uh, some expenses linda <coughs> that are not uh, again the most uh, the, the ones that we like to see mm -hmm. okay uh, so we'll be discussing on this uh, together guys stay till the end as we'll have a follow-up here on our friend linda so stay till the end so that you can see if she has taken action. How today you feel about your finance? Do you feel some type of like pressure around it or not really? So I feel like my financial situation, I don't have like a lot of pressure on it, but I don't feel like I have like a lot of relief on it either. Okay. Uh, so let's start actually right away, uh, Linda, together looking at your income and your assets. So let's uh, look into that atypical profession, a tattoo apprentice. Tell me a little bit more. How long have you been doing this for and how much do you earn from that? So I've been doing this for around like two and a half months, almost three. Okay. Um, I don't make that much money. Like some days I can make zero dollars. Some days I can leave with like 70 bucks, maybe averaging around like $200 a month. $200 a month? Okay, wait, hold on. How many hours do you work there to make zero? So uh, I always start at like 11 a.m., sometimes 12. Um, okay, not bad. And then usually I go past 1 a.m., so then... I'm sorry, 1 a.m.? Mm -hmm. So hold on. So you're working from 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. and you're making peanuts? Yeah. No way. Yeah. How is this comprehensive? Like, are they getting just like free labor from you? Well, it's like an exchange. So they're giving me like knowledge and information that I am paying with my time and body, basically. I see. Okay. When you're telling me like information, are they allowing you to tattoo or no? You're just standing behind and looking. I'm just not very familiar with this environment. Um, I'm, I should be tattooing soon. I feel like 
I've definitely heard horror stories about apprentices before. I think the apprentices, like a, being a tattoo apprentice has changed throughout the years. I think like if you would have asked someone a few years ago, like you would maybe, you can go three years without getting paid nothing. You're an apprentice and you don't get a tattoo wow. after three years. Yeah. So I, my, um, cause I have, this is my second apprentice. My first one, um, he didn't have enough time for me. So then I had to quit. Wow, so it's kind of a, a necessary rhythm that you have to go, mm -hmm. every tattoo artist. And, and, and then from that point, can you say, oh, I have been the apprentice of this specific person and it gives you credibility? Is that how it works? Kind of, yeah. I, I would feel like things have definitely changed over the past few years. Like nowadays, people can start, like, because you can buy it off Amazon, right? So you can go That's off right. Amazon, you can go on YouTube, and you can, like, tattoo at home. You could have a tattoo artist in like six months nowadays. Ooh. So like right now, I'm working. the The pace that I'm learning is a lot quicker than most people, but it's still like a few months of like mopping, sweeping, mm. cleaning the whole shop, running errands, grabbing food, um, and then like hours of drawing after work, and then hours of learning, and like hours of like cleaning stations and breaking up stations and. Wow, I'm, I am actually astonished that this almost like initiation still exists in this world. The fact that here in Seattle, where oh, you kind of need money to live, mm -hmm. uh, you're spending here tens of hours in this place. And, and do they guarantee you work at the end of the day, at least? After I like kind of graduate from my apprenticeship and become a ta an actual tattoo artist, um, I, I get to work there, yeah. Oh, okay. So, and, and how much can you expect from that? I don't know. Um, I know that, like, how much my boss makes an hour and then how much my um, how much co-workers... Make? He makes two twenty five an hour, his ratings on his tattoos. And he goes, he'll, he'll tattoo from, like, 3 p.m. to, like, sometimes at, like, 1 in the morning sometimes. Wow. So he does, he does because he does really big... Um, pieces on like back arms legs it takes a lot of time yeah it takes a lot of time and he's been tattooing for like 10 plus years so so you're gonna graduate is this a place where you're just gonna be able to take a room and there you go 100 percent of what you make is on you or is it more like hey you know i'm the boss i'm giving you the space you know give me 30 percent of what you make what's the what's the deal my shop is percentage base how much does he take when i when i'm starting off he'll yeah take, he'll take 50 Ooh. But then he's providing oh almost God. all of it. And then okay. the more I I upfront, like I start buying my own supplies and stuff, it goes higher and higher and before I like until I'm just basically paying for the space. I see. Okay. Okay, that's fair. So uh, how long did you graduate? I should be graduating in a few months. Okay, so that's a pretty fast space. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, but in the meantime, I guess you have to uh, cover for your running expenses. So on the side, you work as a server, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how much does that provide you? Actually, here, I brought some statements for you. Okay, well, that's great to see. Uh, okay, so those are bi-weekly. I see that you're making just some money here on the side. Net 800, 160. And tips. Okay, so I see here you're making pretty much those are, those are your tips, right? Okay, and from your tips, around 140 per day or so? Give or take. Okay. How many hours do you work as a waitress? 18. How many hours a week do you work as a tattoo apprentice? 30. Okay, so you're probably uh, running around 50 hours a week. So your schedule is already pretty picked up, huh? Mm -hmm. But here, as I look through some of your statements on your income, uh, it's around 1,100, including tips every two weeks, so about 2,200. Okay, is that fair? That's fair. Okay, so overall, then, together, that brings your income, including your tattoo apprentice, of uh, $200 at $2,400 every month, which means pre-tax, looking at your yearly average, you're at $41,100, more or less, okay? How does that compare for people in your category, the median in the United States, 50% make more, 50% make less, between 20 and 24 years old, is at 36,500. So you're making 41.1. You're a pinch higher, but uh, Linda, you live in Seattle. And uh, we'll see, actually, this is uh, giving you quite of a struggle to live with. 
as we transition here together into your assets. Looking at your checking account, I, 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 I see a balance of $68. Mm. <laughs> right. And uh, it's not over. You also have a balance of uh, $4 on a saving. Ah, uh, no, I think it's like $360. So even, <laughs> 366, even less. $366, <laughs> indeed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm giving you the, the rounding. Okay. <laughs> do you have anything else? Oh, wait. I actually do have um, a check waiting for me at the, oh. the serving job for like $900. Nine hundred dollars upcoming. Okay, so that's definitely going to help you out a little bit. <laughs> um, do you have any other assets? Do you have any? S do you have any investment accounts? No. Okay, retirement funds. Nope. House equities. Nothing. No a car. Sir. I have a car. Ah, you have a car. Okay. Uh, what car do you drive? Uh, it's a Toyota Solara. Toyota Solara. What year? Two thousand and six. Okay. How many miles? 122. Oh, okay, so well, that's barely been driven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you buy it yourself? It's a funny story. I got it from my mom's hot. So <laughs> your, your mom's hot? Hold on, mom what do hot. you mean? Like, she's just hot, so then she gets a lot of, like, free stuff, so then I've gotten this car for free. Oh, okay. So you're leveraging the, you know, the hotness of your mom, <laughs> okay, uh, to get cars. Yeah. <laughs> really? Is the, and, and, and it works? I'm, I'm not doing anything. I'm just Is it the first car that you're getting from her? No. <laughs> wow. Okay. So she's getting cars left and right. <laughs> uh, so when she meets someone, she's like, hey, buy me a car. Is that how it works? Um, I don't think she's asking for them. I think she's receiving them. I feel like it's just the charm of my mom, I guess. I see. Are they still together with your no. monk father? No. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, do you own any debt on it? Nope. Is that your name? Yep. Okay, well, I'm glad to see. Actually, looking at the Kelly Blue Book for it, it's at around 4,400. Nothing outstanding, but, you know, it's giving you um, a good amount of equity at uh, 24 years old here. Linda, if you were to sell everything you have, you're looking at 5,372. A lot of it is the hot mom car, right? <laughs> okay. Let's transition then together into our next segment here, which looks at your expenses and your debt. Your house, how much do you pay for rent? Uh, 520. 520? Okay. Does that include in your utilities and everything? No. How much would you say is that? I think maybe an extra 200 or something. Okay. Like internet, water bills, garbage. Okay, that's fair. So that brings your housing expenses against your income at 30%. Mm -hmm. We like it to be at 28. So mm -hmm. you have pinch oh, you live in Seattle, 720. I'm not too worried. Let's rock and roll. You can continue with this. You, yeah. you probably are sharing with your roommates, right? Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Okay, looking at your car transportation, right away you're paying zero. Thanks, mom. Thanks, the hot mom. But you're probably paying for gas. How much do you spend on gas per month? 140. Okay. What about uh, insurance? 170. Okay. So that brings then your transportation expense. I mean, again, uh, thank you that you don't have a car payment at 13% of your income. We like it to be below 15. Oh, perfect. Kudos to you right <laughs> now. What I'm seeing, I can't say it's really good on some of your big polls. But then uh, I transition here, Linda, to some of your credit card expenses. And uh, whoo, let me see what's going on here because uh, what I'm seeing is not the most optimal, especially let's start right away with the Black Duck. $575 on Ovago. What is that? It's uh, Miami tickets. Miami tickets for what? My friend's birthday. Miami tickets for your friend's birthday when you have 60 bucks on your account, Linda. Come on. No, but $575. Are you paying for her? I'll pay for both of us. <sighs> That's the, the oh, and that's is that the Airbnb then at three thirty one as well? Yeah. How many days are you spending there? Uh, like four, I think. Okay, what's running through your mind that you have to spend for her uh, the airplane when you don't have much money on your front and you're stacking on credit card debt as well? What's going on? Well, I feel like he's having money problems too, so I'm like, oh, it's so fine. let me take his burden. <laughs> yeah. No. Yes. Okay. What are best friends for? Yeah, well, don't get a best friend if it's for you to stack in debt. No, I know. That's not a good excuse. I don't like this, Linda. No, 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 no. Especially as I look through some of the rest of your expenses. Tokyo Ramen, you went twice last month, $87. 
first one. $35 the second, 87. What are you doing? You're buying the restaurant there? What's going on? I'm paying for, I think the 87 was I was paying for my boyfriend and his little sister. You're paying for everyone all the time. I mean, we, we go back and forth. So it's like, I pay for him, he pays for me. Mm. Okay. And then you went again, 35. Yeah, but the Korean, 85. So you also paid again for uh, <laughs> the family. Korean restaurant, Korean barbecue, $85. Uh, when was that? I don't remember going to the Korean restaurant. But I can, I can definitely believe it's spending that much. Yeah, same thing, same trend. You're also spending quite a bit here, going out. California, $26. Burger, uh. $13. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, why it's kind of a recurring trend when people, they don't have much and they still spend a ton of money outside. But, ladies and gentlemen, wait for the rock and roll. Pet expenses are out of the roof. Ah, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. 151 92 what's going on here just two dogs food and uh, then I recently see. i don't get haircuts very often for him but recently you did see me go to the pet um pet go to get a haircut uh, let me ask you the ultimate question do you have pet insurance no oh no uh. no 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 how old are they mm, they're they're both eight this is basic as it comes, guys. If you've seen the show, please get pet insurance. The veterinary here in the US is so out bad. of this world. I've there definitely no spent uh, Gizmo for some plus broke his back twice, and I spent like a few thousands. A few thousand. Yeah, and that's, that's all. Uh, briefly, you mentioned that at some point you were stacking on ten thousand dollars of savings. What happened to it? I just I was unemployed for so long that I just spent all of it how long were you unemployed for half a year give or take mm, holy smokes i, I mean know. at least uh, you haven't stacked up crazy amount of uh, credit card debt over that yeah. time because i had so much saving and now it's all gone yeah and then you have 40 bucks <laughs> and that brings you today linda to a credit card debt of a thousand three hundred and thirty two 13% interest. I don't know how you strike that on credit card debt. Not too bad, <laughs> I have to say, but still, we don't like credit card debt. Mm -hmm. And you know that. Uh, yes. You usually tend to pay it full, would you say? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and as I review here, going on through some of your credit score, actually, you have a pretty strong credit score of 784. Mm. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Now, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, though, just, just at home, be very mindful with this. Even if you have a 784 credit score, mm -hmm. yes, it is good on paper. But this, to me, right now, looking at some of the rest of your credit history and so on, is not as strong as the score says. What I mean by that is, when an institution look at your credit score, when they are looking for loans to provide you with loans, mm -hmm. they don't just look at the score. The score is a pinch. It's just a, you know, something overall. They look at, you know, how many accounts have you opened? How have you been doing around your credit utilization and like your credit limits and so on? And, and so here, looking at the credit limit on your credit card, it's around you know twelve thousand dollars, which is nice to see. But you don't have anything else, given that you don't have any other debt that you're paying that is showcasing your ability to pay debt. So, a seven hundred and eighty-four credit score here may not qualify you for some of the best loans, mm -hmm. despite being so high. You have to showcase that ability to manage different debt. And that's why sometimes having, oh, I'm I'm minding my words here, having different credit cards potentially, if played well, can allow you to build up on that credit score. Mm -hmm. Okay. In your case, I, I just want to be mindful with it. You have one credit card, you're just already stacking on debt with it. Oh, it's just like do I want to encourage you to take another one to strengthen your credit score? I do have one more credit card. Oh. But it's like a, I totally forgot, it's a, it's a Nordstrom one. Oh, no. God. Yeah, it's okay. terrible. No, yeah, oh, thank you. Okay, it's, please. It's terrible. Never <laughs> take departmental credit cards, please. Except on very rare occasions when there is like an exceptional offer. Otherwise, it's awful. If you want to start the credit card game and if you want to start building a credit score, 
assuming that you can pay your balance every, every time, start with institutions mm -hmm. and then you can grow that card and make it evolve. I have a Chase credit cards that I've had for seven years that have evolved three times instead of being stuck on departmental credit cards and then you are screwed with generally shit interest and very shit benefits. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you this. One of the big pain points here that I might be seeing for, do you have health insurance? Oh, no. God. Okay. Let's uh, actually, we'll dive into this later on as I think about some of your recommendations. But it's true that uh, with, uh, you know, around uh, 60 bucks on your account with no health insurance, uh, no pet insurance, you're running a lot of risk here in the United States. It's not like you are in France and, like, if something arises, you know, you have the government that's on you here. You're kind of on your own, and I'm a little bit scared about that. Okay, well... Now that I have a good understanding of your situation, Linda, I am going to bring you to a next segment, which is the money case. I want to bring to your attention one of America's biggest issues nowadays, the credit card debt. And why do I think it's one of the worst thing that can happen? As I reviewed, for example, your Northrum credit cards with an interest rate of... 30%. Okay? Actually, wow. It's awful. so bad. It's as bad as it is. <laughs> yeah. So let's say, you know, that you were carrying that balance of the $1,300 on that Nordstrom credit card. Mm -hmm. Okay? And people sometimes, they are like, oh, yeah, let me just spend it now and pay it later. Generally, it doesn't happen. That's how, you know, bank companies, they make money. And, you know, you think people offer, like, benefits, miles, and just reward points if they're not betting on a bunch of people not paying their credit cards. Guys, let's be honest. When you are not paying your credit card debt, you're paying not only the bank, but you're also paying everyone that benefits from the points and so on. You you know, it's kind of the system. Otherwise, nobody would be making money. If you were to carry that $1,300 balance on that Northrum card and you just forget about it and let it ride with interest, mm -hmm. the amount of money that you would own on that card in three years is $3,000. That's wild. $3,000 is the amount that you would owe on it. Mm -hmm. Just from a $1,300 debt. That's three years only. Mm -hmm. Now, let's move on to our next one, just for fun. If you were to carry that balance for five years, you would owe $5,000. 10 years, are you ready for this? It is insane. 18400 that is the amount of money that you would owe if you didn't pay that credit card. And that's why when people are saying, oh, let me just pay it in a couple of years. No, you're paying three times the amount. And in this case, almost 18 times the amount that you owe. Mm -hmm. So please, when you consider credit card, never take credit card debt. So we are back together here, Linda. Let me walk you through what I would do if I was in your shoes, okay? Mm -hmm. First, we have to identify your needs. This is money that you need. If shit hits the fan today, per month, you need $1,750. That is assuming your minimum payment on your car, your rent, your food. I give you about a $300 allocation, some of the subscription, you know, a kind of uh, regular living if you tight the belt, okay? Mm -hmm. Not going to a freaking Miami or spending a... Uh, shit ton of money at the Korean barbecue. <laughs> <clears throat> that is 73% of your income. We like it to be below 50. Mm -hmm. And that is because your income is not as high as yeah. we would like it to be in Seattle, okay? Mm -hmm. Considering this, there is the second category here, which I call wants. This is money that you're going to be able to spend on things that you like, but that are unnecessary to live. Mm -hmm. And that includes maybe a you know, a restaurant here and there or, you know, the celebration of your partner or something. But mm -hmm. I am giving you per month a hundred dollars. That's it. So little. It's so little, but mm -hmm. uh, you have, uh, you know, $68 on your account, Linda, and you have nothing to cover your grounds if something was to happen. You mm -hmm. no longer have that $10,000 savings. See what I mean? You're running of a very fine line. This is true. This is true. So where does that lead you? Today, per month, I need you, no matter what, please, you have to build some financial strength to save $550. In my savings? So let me tell you what I'm going to do from this. Okay. okay. No financial advice. Step by step. One, 
stop those bad expenses that are killing you. You would have 10 grand on your account. Maybe I can say, okay, you can go and kind of offer the, to the whole table of the restaurants, uh, <laughs> ramen, $87, <laughs> or, you know, the ticket to your friend at uh, 300 bucks in Miami and the Airbnb and all of that. No, mm -hmm. no mas. You really cannot afford this lifestyle right now, especially because your profession is in the artist world. Today, let, let, let's be frank. If you want to build a business, you're going to need to have money. Mm -hmm. If you want to build the material to increase your percentage that we've discussed together at the tattoo shop, you're not going to be able to come in with $68, right? Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. So reduce your bad expenses that are unnecessary. Two, please pay the credit card debt. Never again will you take any of that except for crazy emergencies. Looking right now at a repayment method, it's going to take you around three months or so to pay that down. So pay it as soon as you can. Every cent that you can save, pay it towards it. Mm -hmm. Okay. As we continue to progress here together, I want you to please, please get health insurance. Oh, <laughs> okay. I had misadventures when I was young, at mm -hmm. your age. I was 26 years old. Something happened. And... I was driven to the hospital for trauma where I stayed for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. The bill that I received was $160,000. If at the time I didn't have health insurance, that's it. Mm -hmm. Your life starts with $160,000 of debt on something that wasn't even my fault. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that? You, it was preventable because you had health insurance. I had health insurance yeah. and I left with a couple thousand dollars worth that I had to carry for a while, but it was okay. Yeah. I was able to live pass by it. Mm -hmm. One misadventure could completely flip your life and your outlook. Mm -hmm. You don't have the system to support you here. Mm -hmm. Same thing, your pets. Get the damn pet insurance. It's ah. going to cost you 60, but you, you, you're just a living a life full of risk. Mm -hmm. But but is that what you know? You are just free flowing, and you're expecting nothing to happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, without running, my boy here, the little bogo, ate a piece of plastic. Six thousand dollars surgery at the vet. Mm -hmm. What do you do if something like this arises? What do you do? Put it on my credit card. Yeah, you put it on your credit card. You're paying three times the amount in three years. Mm -hmm. Number four, start. Finance 101, again, an emergency fund or a saving. Okay, that is money that you're going to put on the side to cover your needs. I need you to target $5,000 ASAP. You've saved at some point $10,000. You can save $5,000. I don't know what's going on since you flipped that story, but you had at some point the saving behavior mm -hmm. and you lost it. From that point, once you have that going on, you're going to number one, start feeling a little bit safer. Number two, you're going to be able to start thinking about investing into your business because you need money to make money. Mm -hmm. Just running this podcast is costing me quite a bit of money, let me tell you. Okay, And at some point, guys, if you follow, we'll <laughs> do an audit <laughs> on how much, have I, how much this, this venture has cost me. Mm -hmm. you know? But you need money to make money. Mm -hmm. And if you're coming and starting your profession, you're going to have to market yourself as a tattoo artist. You're going to have to go to conventions. You're going to have to create some type of art display or something. But if you have nothing to come up with, you're going to be stuck. Mm -hmm. And I don't want you to feel stuck. Okay. So then from that, we can start thinking together about kind of retirement funds with rough IRA investments and so on. But today I want you to start thinking about the base, the base that right now you've shown in the past, but you're not showing it today. So the question that I have for you Lina, is, are you going to take action on the components that I've just mentioned today, saving that 550, or do you feel like it's not realistic? That sounds fair, yeah. Are you gonna cover at least 550 by the time I call you in about a month? I will try my best. Mathematically, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Any final thoughts as we wrap up our discussion? As a commitment to the audience, to myself, and then to my boss too, and my future, I'm gonna save 500, and fifty dollars and then put that towards my credit card debt all right we'll be following up on that guys it's always a pleasure to have you on this show and we like to provide that 
you know, the variety as always. But please, we would love for your support. So if you can like and subscribe, this will help us tremendously. Until then, we we'll see you next time. A bientôt.